is a very, very important time on the planet in this, what you could call a dream. It's a very big, big moment and it will bring up a lot of feelings and a lot of stuff for many, many people, if not everybody. So my purpose for this talk is primarily to alleviate fear, to lessen fear. We're going to look at three aspects <clears throat> of what's facing us. We're going to look at the physical, we're going to look at the mind, and we're going to look at what's going on in the world, what seems to be going on. And apropos what's going on in the world, I'm going to show a video, a 10 minute video, later about that. So what's going on in the body and in the mind? This fear that we have about the virus, we're going to look at to see whether it's a rational fear or an irrational fear. Now, since we're speaking to people from maybe quite a few different countries, when I say a rational fear, that's something that, let's say you're standing in front of a lion and it's, it's, it's charging at you and you have fear coming up to get out of the way. That's a rational fear. And an irrational fear is, let's say, um, the fear of getting into an elevator, for example that we think we're going to, that something terrible will happen to us, even though elevators seem to go up and down without any drama. That's an irrational fear. So I'm going to help you look at this whole virus thing to see whether it is actually a rational fear that we're working with. And I'm going to start with an experience that I had 40 years ago. Once upon a time in my life, 40 years ago, let's turn off the music, I think. 40 years ago, I was um, running a business to do with squash, you know, the game of squash. And Stamina, that's um, endurance, was extremely important to me. My need to win was unbelievably high. So I would push myself to the limit. So 40 years ago I had this experience playing squash and whenever I had a cold or flu, which usually lasted for a week or 10 days, quite a common length of time, and all the, you know, blowing the nose and sneezing had finished and all that feeling of nerves had gone. And then I would play squash perhaps the next day. I noticed that my stamina went up like this. I could run and run and run and not feel tired. And this happened every time I had a cold. So I started to think that, why is this? The cold or the flu didn't, you know, drain my body. It didn't make me tired or weak. It felt like it cleansed me. I, I felt, I felt cleansed, and I noticed over the next uh, two or three weeks, this this level of stamina would gradually go down. You know, I mean, my diet in those days was not very really good, and I was sitting on a lot of stuck emotions and whatever. So I had this insight that maybe what we think about colds and flu is not what we've been taught. But maybe it's not something that I caught. Maybe it was a cleansing process. And I think I was given this experience 40 years ago at this very moment to share this with you. Imagine a little girl who 
is walking, is playing in the street and sees this uh, house burning and a fire engine with firemen uh, tending to the fire, trying to put out the fire. And she sees it once, and a few days later, she's walking down another street, and she sees another house burning with a, another fire engine with these men tending to the fire. So she comes to the conclusion that these men in these red trucks uh, start fires. <laughs> and maybe we have the same, made the same error about things like viruses. So my question is, is a virus the fire or the fireman? Is the virus the fire itself? or the fireman helping. I'm now going to... Oh yes, I, I didn't mention earlier, I'm working very much with the Course in Miracles and I know some of you watching also are doing that, but not all of you. So I'm going to read one or two quotes because I, I find it's helpful um, and you can take it as you wish. But what the Course in Miracles says, and incidentally, this, those who have never seen a Course in Miracles before, it's, it's a book, it's a channeled work that came through in the 60s. It's a book to teach us um, peace, inner peace. Um, to, it tells us what's going on in the mind and how to undo what we do to make us not peaceful, basically. And it talks a lot about sickness and the mind, and this is a quote. It's a little bit of a long quote, so I'll read it slowly and maybe explain a little bit. It says, sickness is an election, a decision. It may not be a conscious decision, but nevertheless, I'll explain a little, a little later what I mean. Sickness is a decision. The resistance to recognizing this is enormous because the existence of the world as you perceive it depends on the body being the decision maker. You think the body is, has its own creative abilities. Terms like instincts, reflexes and the like represent attempts to endow the body with non-mental motivators. Actually, such terms merely state or describe the problem. They do not answer it. The acceptance of sickness as a decision of the mind for a purpose with which it would use the body is the basis of healing. And this is so for healing in all forms. A patient decides that this is so and he recovers. If he decides against recovery, he will not be healed. So who is the physician? Only the mind of the patient himself. The outcome is what he decides that it is. Again, most of this is not conscious, but it's unconscious. Special agents, and that can be a um, form of therapy, um, pills, um, massage, whatever it is that you, you do, special agents seem to be ministering to him, being given to him, yet they but give form to his own choice. In other words, if you believe something will help you, then it probably will. This is a bit like the placebo effect. Special agents seem to be ministering to him, yet they but give form to his own choice. He chooses them in order to bring tangible form to his desires. And it is, this, it is this that they do, and nothing else. They are not actually needed at all. The patient could merely rise up without their aid and say, I have no use of this. There is no form of sickness that would not be cured at once. Now, why is it called the Course of Miracles? Well, the Course of Miracles is a shift in perception. And it is possible if you truly have a shift of perception at a very deep level, you can have a miracle um, healing, almost in, a, in the instant. However, it also says that for most of us that would bring up 
way too much fear if we suddenly were able to do that. So for 99.9% .9 of us, we go through a journey in our healing. It takes, it takes time. And this comes from the Manual for Teachers in the section called How is Healing Accomplished? So for most of us, it's a journey. This is a diagram introduced by the Meta, Meta Medicine researchers. And I would like to show how this ties in very much with what I've just read in the course, that the sickness is a decision. And it talks about two phases, that all sickness goes through two phases. And the first decision really starts over here. This is a timeline starting from the left to the right. This is normal health. And something happens, a trigger. Let's, let's give an example. Let's say you're in a relationship and um, you've been in partnership for some time. And then your partner just ups and leaves and dumps you. And let's say you're someone who has, what's the term, self-devaluation. That's one of their core beliefs, get running. They go into what they call the stress phase. You're in a lot of stress and pain and maybe anger and thinking all sorts of thoughts about blaming the other person for dumping you and how you're feeling and everything. And during this phase, things start to happen in your body. And with this particular um, type of conflict, self-devaluation, you start losing cells actually in the bones. And the longer this goes on, the weaker you get, and you might even die in this phase. But what happens is that if there's a shift, let's say um, you get a new partner, so suddenly you come out of the stress phase. doesn't mean you've healed your mind because it could happen again and you would go back into the stress phase. Or you might truly get into forgiveness and feel totally at peace again in this place here where the where you suddenly come out of that phase and you start going into the healing phase. Now the healing phase is roughly the same length of time as the stress phase. But it's in the healing phase where you get the symptoms. And most of the diseases that you go to the doctor for. In the stress phase you feel cold, you feel maybe weak, but very few symptoms. Some conflicts create symptoms, but most do not. Most of them come up in the stress phase. Now with this particular thing, you're, you have self-devaluation and your partner dumps you, what will happen in the regeneration phase is you'll get the symptoms of leukemia. And um, one of the symptoms of leukemia is also anemia. And bone growth, the bones will start growing again. But your symptoms will become very strong. And especially in the middle of the healing phase, there's always what you call a healing peak or healing crisis, where the symptoms become very, very strong. That's usually when you go to the doctor. You go to the doctor, he says, oh, you've got leukemia. We need to get rid of the symptoms. So he gives you some drug. And this drug will push you, it will always stress the body, and it will push you back into the stress phase. So you actually don't heal at all. But it, it looks like to the medical profession that it's working because the symptoms disappear. Same with chemo. Chemo is a very powerful stress to the body, it pushes you into the stress phase and some people their symptoms seem to disappear. For someone who 
um, let's talk about this virus that's running around the world. The symptoms are um, to do with sneezing, uh, fever, um, blowing your nose, feeling pretty, pretty yuck most of the time. Things to do with the lungs are to do with grief and the fear of death, according to this philosophy. And believe me, the planet is definitely feeling a lot of grief because there's a lot of things going on. And so, when something happens <coughs> to someone who's been in a stress phase with grief, there's a resolution and you go into this phase where all the symptoms that look like this um, coronavirus, they're happening in the healing phase, not in the stress phase. So the person has already gone through some sort of resolution. This is why it's not happening for everybody, it's just happening for a few. However, for some, if their system is very toxic and they've been in a stress phase for a very long time, the healing crisis can be so intense that you can die in the middle of it. And this is why a few people are dying from any form of disease. So the, the way to handle this disease is if, if you are a very toxic person and have been in a very long period of stress, it's probably wise to have something to slow this process down so you don't die in the middle of it. Like if you have a fever, instead of taking antibiotics, and anti antibiotics, by the way, also take you back into the stress phase. They don't heal you. They don't heal the virus. And I'll talk about viruses in a moment. It's wise to take something that will slow the process down, a little bit of a stressor, just pull it back a little bit so that these, the, stress, the healing phase is not too intense. This also applies to emotions and feelings. Um, once we start, you know, like we can be in a stress phase actually most of our life and then we start going on courses and doing things like rebirthing and we start to have a lot of feelings coming up and sometimes they can be really intense. The same thing is happening, we're in, in the regeneration phase. And if you had a trauma when you were very young, guess what? The healing phase takes quite some years. Now, viruses, since that's what we're really looking at at the moment. So, what is a virus? <clears throat> what the Meta Medicine people say is that, that we have actually millions of viruses in our system all the time. And the coronavirus has, and many forms of the coronavirus have been in our system probably forever. And they stay inactive until you get to here. The viruses then start to grow and they reverse the process in, of cell loss and start to rebuild the cells. Sometimes in the stress phase you lose cells and sometimes you, you gain cells, like getting tumours or something. It all depends on the type of conflict that's going on in the mind. I'd like to read another quote. I, I'm, a week ago, I got really this um, prompt to give this talk because well, I wanted to be helpful, but also it helped me look at this whole meta medicine thing again because I had kind of shelved it. And I started to see it much more clearly, much more deeply, and also how aligned it is with the Course in Miracles. Right, we've already seen that. It aligns with the fact that it's a decision of the mind, albeit unconscious. I'd like to read another quote from the manual for teachers in the course entitled, Should Healing Be Re Repeated? And it goes like this. One of the most difficult temptations to recognize is that to doubt a healing because of the appearance of continuing symptoms is a mistake in the form of lack of trust. If we knew 
that the, the symptoms mainly come in the healing phase, we wouldn't be so concerned. Yes, we might want to slow them down, but we wouldn't be in fear that we were getting sick and know that we were actually healing if we knew what actually was going on. So as I said earlier, if our minds are not <clears throat> healed enough that we can actually perform a miracle on ourselves and have an instant healing, for most of us, we have to go through this, this process which takes some time. One of the other things that Course in Miracles talks about is um, we often judge our greatest advances as our greatest retreats, and sometimes our greatest retreats as our greatest advance, ad advances truth is we have no idea where we are on this journey. So I think it's very helpful to, to have some idea of the process that's going on in the mind and in the body so that we can alleviate fear. Now the third aspect that we were going to look at is like what's going on in the world? Why is this happening? I'm going to show you a video in a moment by a lady called Tina Spaulding, who's actually channeling Jesus and other masters from the non-physical realms. <clears throat> and Jesus is going to give us um, a ten-minute talk about why what is happening in the world is happening right now. But before I show that, I just want to make a couple of comments about what is going on in, in our human minds, in our ego minds? What is something that we do perpetually in the, the realm or the ego mind? And that is, like, what are we searching for? Like when we're reading the newspapers, when we're um, seeing movies and <clears throat> what's going on around us, what we're doing is we're actually looking for the bad guy. We're looking for... Or, the bad country, the, the whatever, something out there that I can blame for my sense of suffering and aloneness. So although, on the one hand, we don't like what's going on in the world, part of our ego actually quite likes what's going on. Now we've found the ultimate bad guy that we can blame, and it's the coronavirus, and or the establishment that's causing the, the shutdown in the world. And also start to notice how we, like we do in a war, we, we unite with our brothers against the enemy. There's been a lot of coming together, I notice, and there's nothing wrong with that, but just for us to be aware of what's actually happening here. So I think I'm going to hand it over to Tina Spaulding, and then do a little summary after the video. So that's Tina Spaulding. And as she says, she's a trans channel. Hello, Tina Spaulding, trans channel here. I have been guided to do a video for all of you. Uh, so um, I'm just going to get right to it. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one that you know as Jesus. And you have all been uh, chosen, let us say, to be uh, on this planet at this time. This is no accident that there are so many uh, souls incarnated here. You are all here because you want to experience the transformation of this planet. You want to have the opportunity to give your uh, very best um, contribution to the changes that are coming about at this time. The coronavirus is being used as a device to garner control over many, many people. There have been far uh, worse epidemics and there are far, far worse epidemics happening all around the planet at this time. If you look at uh, diseases such as malaria or typhoid or HIV or any of these diseases, uh, there has never been a response like this to anything before. What we want you to ask is the question, why? Why has there been such strict 
uh, implementation of controls over the entire planet for such a small number of fatalities. This kind of number of fatalities is nothing in the scheme of things. When you look at the numbers that are um, recorded annually on your planet, the, num the several thousand that are uh, transpiring at this time do not warrant what is happening globally. So you must get out of emotion. Uh, and this is what's happening with your mass media systems. There is a constant barrage of fear uh, being forced down your throats. And the response of a fearful mind is a lowering of intelligence, a lowering of wisdom, a lowering of the ability to make sound decisions. So what's happening globally is a preparation for uh, what we say catastrophic measures. There are going to be measures implemented that give global control of a huge number of people. Why is this happening? It is happening because there are events that will be transpiring in the next few months that are going to cause such a reaction in the average person that the powers that be decided that they wanted to have the control in place first. So the mass meetings of sports, uh, flights canceled, companies collapsing, entire countries in isolation. This is being done as a preemptive strike to gain control of the entire world's population because something big is coming. Now, what is coming is not disastrous. What is coming is uh, transformative. Now, we have limits on what we can tell you about what is coming, but what is coming is transformative for your entire planet. So the powers that be have decided that the information that's coming is so transformative that the um, control measures are being placed in preemptively so that there is not chaos, so that there is not rioting in the streets. You have all become convinced that to gather with others is now life-threatening. This is a very, very clever strategy, and it is not unwise in that sense, because you are going to be much more manageable as a population if you believe that going outside and talking to other people is going to kill you. You are not going to be challenging the governments. You are not going to be uh, poking around in places that you shouldn't. Movements of people are going to be very, very clear and clean and easy to control. So why are we telling you this? Well, we are telling you this because we want to ease your suffering. We want to ease your suffering so that you are making sound decisions, making sound decisions with your investments, making sound decisions with your purchases, making sound decisions with your health, making sound decisions um, listening to the news. If you begin to question what is happening, even though you may not be able to change what is happening, you will be a much, in a much more powerfully strategic place when these events transpire. You will not be fearful, you will be prepared. You, will, you may not be able to fly, you may not be able to run and hide or, or travel, but you do not need to be quaking in your shoes the whole time. So what we want you to do now is to use the restrictions for your benefit. Uh, this being has had a restriction placed on her travel because of these circumstances and she is mulling over how to use this time productively, lovingly, creatively and we would suggest that you all do the same thing. Instead of wasting these weeks and months in fear and terror, 
we suggest you focus on your health, not as um, a way of avoiding death, but as a way of preparing for transformation. You are all going to be transformed mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We do not want you to be in fear. That is not how spirit works. We encourage you to expansion. We encourage you to love. We encourage you to connection. If you are fearful of physical connection, connect with each other through your phones, connect with each other through your FaceTimes and your Facebooks. Commune with those you love and talk to those you love frequently, reassuring them and letting them know that uh, there is some fear mongering going on and they don't need to be locked in isolation in terror. You may be locked in isolation because of the laws of your country, but you do not need to be locked in terror. That is the choice. You have freedom of mind. You may not have freedom of body, but honestly, if you don't have freedom of mind, it doesn't matter if your body's free. You are, you are a prisoner nonetheless. So use this time to free your mind, use this time to study wise spiritual teachings that are going to empower you and make you feel good. Use this time to plant a garden, use this time to invest in improving your home, invest in making your um, life more efficient and more beneficial to yourselves and your families. These are wonderful times. Your planet is going through an evolution and this is one of the, what you will say, one of the speed bumps along the highway. It's getting you to slow down so that you are better prepared. But do not let the fear mongering upset you. Do not let the fear mongering uh, cause you to perceive yourselves as weak. You are not weak, but you must control your mind. You must control your decisions. You must take the reins of your life into your own hands and not hand them to someone else. They have the power to rule over you in physical terms, but they do not have the power to rule over your hearts and your minds and your souls. I am that one that you know is Jesus, and I will speak to you again soon. So just a little bit of a summary of what we've looked at. I called the, the talk, um, Discover the Good News, you could say the good news is maybe this fear of a virus is actually an irrational fear, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. Fear definitely leads to stress. And defenses do what they would defend. When we defend against anything, we make it happen. So all this defending that we're doing on the planet interesting to look at exactly the effect of that. Forgiveness is the start of the healing. But beware that because of the healing, the symptoms can come after. <laughs> and maybe our real job is to accept the healing symptoms even though they might feel uncomfortable. And to control them a little bit if they get too intense. What I was, would like to have suggest was the, the dress code for this evening. <laughs> Not that we can see very well. Could you turn that light off just for a second? This was a suggested dress code for this evening. <laughs> okay, thank you. <clears throat> and then finally, we're doing this uh, recording in the Holistic Center in, in Denmark, of which I'm a part. And of course now we've had to close all, uh, all events here. So there's very little income coming in and we have a, a very high rent to pay and we don't know how long this uh, is going to go on. So please, especially if you feel you have value from this talk, please donate. And if you look at the address there, um, I, I can post that in the um, event later anyway, but please donate. 
something at least for this evening. Thank you very much for, for joining us. I hope it's been helpful. Um, and maybe just let's just um, be in prayer together just for a moment. Maybe just connect the breath just for one minute. Maybe close your eyes. Have a moment of prayer to see this whole scenario. This virus, the body symptoms, the control that seems to be going on out in the world. Let's have a prayer to see it differently, to see it peacefully, and to use all of what brings up in us as a classroom for greater inner peace. So, bless you all and thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. I'm going to end the video now. I think. <laughs> there it goes. Bye-bye now. Peace. <laughs>